Okay, so for those of you that don't know me or maybe don't know my story, I have it on my website too. Um, I moved to Arizona in 1998 and I'm originally from Washington State. And this is my family, the photos over here um, on the right. My daughter, Amber, it's my husband, PJ, my son, Tyler, who's getting married to Kylie. Kylie's a, a wedding videographer. And sometimes you guys will see she does uh, headshots and stuff. Um, we This is Bella. She's three. And then we've added Kona. Since both my kids have moved out, I had a freak out moment and um, added a dog <laughs> for some reason, <laughs> a puppy. And um, Amber is now dating Jack. So my my photos are needing to be updated. Um, so this is my family. Uh, I started and got into real estate in 03. My kids were three and four and uh, now they're in their 20s. So took me 12 times to pass the real estate test. Very straightforward, honest. And at the time I didn't know that I was dyslexic, but that's probably one of the reasons why. <laughs> and I gave it to my daughter. Uh, we opened Bliss in 2014, and we have almost 100 agents. So um, let me go back up. I love working with buyers. I do. I love the relationships built. I love the time spent. And a lot of my business from that are the referrals. And looking back on it, I get referrals from their family members and generations. and. Like my clients right now that are building their house, I help them purchase their first house. I went to their wedding. They're pregnant with their third baby. And some of the family members that I've helped, I've helped their grandma, their dads. So that's the type of business I've built. And the thing I love about real estate is that it's ever changing. And you can change and build your business around whatever you decide to do. It could be um, transactional, it can be relationship-based, and this is the fun time because we're, we're planning um, businesses, it's coming up on November, so focus on 2023, what do you want your business to be like, and is it money, is it transactional, is it relationship, and what does that look like for you? And think about a niche. And I just spoke to our coaches about this today. Mine tends to be upsizing. With that, we'll bring other business. But as you focus on one niche, other business will come. We can't be of all trades. You can't help everyone. Um, so be great at one thing. Um, let me go back up. So the first thing is a buyer you're gonna get a referral. It could be an internet lead. It could be a referral from networking. It could be um, someone um, just sends you information or someone contacts you and they're like, hey, so-and-so gave me your information. Great, um, that's a referral, but you have to qualify it. And I have questions in here, so don't freak out and I'll send them to you. Um, but you've got to qualify a buyer. And we call that buyer presentation. And a buyer presentation, when I was a baby agent, we used to meet them face to face. And we used to do this all the time. Um, we'd hand them a, a folder, we'd give them a buyer presentation, buyer docs, and we'd call it a day. And that started changing. Um, even I started doing it in the car. And, and that's what I liked about buyers is I could spend time um, cultivating and talking to them. Well, technology's changed a lot. It's changed a lot of things. And, and I find the positive in that. And COVID even changed a lot. So as you're getting referrals, like some of the referrals that I recently received, a lot of my presentations even start over text. And then I have a conversation. We're, we work for the clients right? And for our referrals. So as much as we like to have a process and a structure, we still work for our clients. So 
I always ask them things and ask them questions, open-ended questions, and we'll get to that. Um, but again, I want to qualify them to see where they're at, what kind of a lead it is, and what do I need to do to help them out? Because I'm a professional. And that's what it comes down to. They don't know what I'm doing. They don't know what my process is. They don't know what my steps are. They don't even know what my questions are. They don't need to know any of that. They, they, just, they just know they were told to call me. So my job is to, to, to ask questions, to connect with me, even if you're at an open house. So this works, it just, it works. So just, just be you. Um, and then you adjust it to the market that you're in. Um, so there's some buyers that may have to move super, super fast. Some buyers may be moving here from other states or countries. It's a question you do need to find out to help them. You're a resource. Yes, we're realtors agents, but number one, we're a resource. You always want to be a resource for them. And if they, if they start off knowing that you're a resource and you have information for them, then they're going to constantly come back to you. And that's what you want, okay? No matter the process, if it takes them six months, if it takes them 12 months, or if you're moving super, super fast, because at the end of the day, after you, they close, you want them to come back to you as a resource, to ask questions, and to refer to you. So learn how to qualify your buyers. And it, again, on the phone, on Zoom, you guys, in COVID, I was talking to buyers and couples moving here from other states and countries. I talked to people in Spain and Norway. I talked to, I just had a client move here from Wyoming. I've had a CEO from American Express move here from, I think it was Indiana. I can't even remember, Lisa. But um, they move here. They move here with their families and they're so excited. So be the professional and help them out. Um, and and teach them. So if you're not comfortable using technology, international clients love Zoom, they love Facebook. You can call over Facebook, and I have it in here, um, texting, and ask them if you can do multiple texts, multiple emails with both of them also. Um, and talking with them on in at an open house, and we can do separate open houses, but following up with them um it's it's super super fun you know it's okay to ask questions and talk to people over text and then connect with them it doesn't always have to be a face-to-face -face. um sometimes i'm even doing the presentation in the first house that i'm showing it, it changed a lot buyers aren't in our vehicles we're meeting them at the properties so adjust your business plan, adjust your processes to the clients, adjust them to um, where they're coming from, adjust it to their age and adjust to what fits for them. You already know that, again, you have to qualify them and get what you need, but, but fit your process and your, your business around them and make them comfortable. So some of the questions, and I do need to change it because my, my number has changed, but um, there's some questions in here that look the same, but they're not. So first question is, when did you plan to move? So a buyer, when they're coming to you, when did they plan to move? That can mean a lot of things. It's also, do they own their own home or are they renting? Because you might be getting a listing, or you may be dealing with a lease with a different time frame. So this helps you with the urgency. How serious are they? It also helps you with their offers because you know if they've got six months, eight months, they might not be super serious in their offer writing. Um, because part of your presentation, and we'll get to that, is explaining the market. But this gets them talking. You always want to ask questions open-ended, never yes and no. You want to get them engaging. 
When did they plan to move? What's their time frame? What's going on? I always ask, why, why were you referred to me? Or why are you calling me? I mean, you don't have to come out with it that way, but you can come up with something that fits your personality. You know, that's great. You're calling me. Thanks for the referral. I'm going to send them a little thank you card. And you can bring that up. How can I help you? What's going on in your life? Have you also pre-qualified with a lender yet? Super important, pre-qualified. That means that they're serious and they've submitted their finances and everything to a lender. If they haven't, send them some lenders or one. Super important. If they have, get the information from them and make that first contact with their lender and introduce yourself. Number one, make sure that lender can work in Arizona. Number two, make sure that you know the processes of that lender. Because I'll tell you what, that lender is already connecting them with other realtors. How long have they been looking? This is also an indication too, if they're serious or if they're working with another agent, which is a question. So um, are they, have they been looking just on the internet, Zillow, realtor.com, which is fine and encourage them to get those properties over to you because it's gonna make you look like a rock star, always. And explain that. I'll even share my screen and show the buyers the MLS. Set up the search with them. Show them you can create multiple searches. What we do is not top secret. Do you already have an agent? Are you working with someone? So it's interesting. I can usually tell when I've been referred someone or someone's calling me, if it's an emergency, is it because their agent's on vacation by asking these questions? Then, then you know, obviously, they're working with someone. I don't want to be that agent that, that someone is just busy. They're dedicated to their agent. But I have gotten clients that they've fired their agents to work with me because that agent is not doing a good job. But again, I won't represent them until they fire their agent. If their agent is part-time, needs help, maybe it's a family member and they're not comfortable with how that family member is taking care of them. You guys can suggest, hey, I'll work with them. I'll pay them a referral. And a lot of buyers are like, really? Well, yeah, why not? I'm, I'll take care of you because I want that client. I'm going to do a good job and then they're going to refer me business. So what, I pay a one-time referral to their friend or family member, and now I have a lifetime client. So start thinking about future business and how to grow that. Even if they come into an open house and they put down they have an agent. If, if they didn't come in with their agent, guys, where's their agent? Um, and some agents that are part-time, they need help with the full-time agent. So team up with them. Share the commission. Help them out. Will you have to sell a home that you live in now in order to buy a new one? Because that goes back to the time frame. Where are you living? What's, what's going on? And talking with the lender, it's going to come out. Do they have a contingency? You know, what are you dealing with? What's happening? So I was referred someone recently. They need to sell a house. And then they were like, they were so upset. They were like, can you even represent us on the new build that we're building? And I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> You're, you're a little past that. Um, I can help you with your listing. Fire offer pad, yes. And I'll get you more money and take care of you, yes. Um, so they're not a buyer. They're, they're ended up being a seller, but they're still a referral. And you talk to them about their timeframes. It's super important timeframes. And then explaining the market. Talk to them about the market and the type of offers. Um, is the market moving slow? Is it moving fast? 
and what do you need to do? And if you need help, that's where we come in or the coach. So we can help you guys out. But you have to know what their time frame is. Are they relocating for a job? When is that start date? What's happening? Maybe there's a trust or a divorce, you know, the deadline. If you can't mess around, then the offers have to be great, strong, don't mess around. Um, and you're going to be going out and looking at houses and it's going to be in like a couple of days. Let's go, let's go, let's go. If you're listing a house, then yeah, you can't play with price. And again, the question at the end, have you even spoken with a lender? So that's different than being pre-qualified. Having a conversation versus pre-qualification, two different things. But if they have a lender, I respect them for that. Um, memorize these questions. It's not a script, guys. I can't remember scripts. I'll just tell you that right now. Um, I'm just me. And I, I just, I just, I'm just me. And the agents know that, clients know that. You either like it or you don't. Um, but get to know open-ended questions and ask the buyers because this will help you up and, and get you prepared but it's a presentation. And then you can start with the process of how to buy in Arizona. Once you start to know what their situation is, um, don't feel awkward in asking these questions because you're coming off as a professional and it's gonna set you apart from the other agents because I'll guarantee most agents do not do buyer presentations. And when you're having that first con, you can even do these at open houses. Um, most agents probably aren't even doing these for their clients. Um, someone needs to mute. But um, if you don't know these answers, you're going to spin your wheels and you're going to get frustrated. If you keep going out and showing houses and you're like, man, why are they not making a decision? Why are they not writing an offer? Well, maybe you haven't asked them what their time frame is. You know, why are they looking? What's going on? Just, so if you if you straight up just ask questions at the very beginning, then you know you're not frustrated. They're not frustrated. No one's wasting their time. Um, and and listen and take notes. A lot of agents don't do this. Listen, um, and then store notes wherever you need to do for clients. Keep them in file folders. Keep them wherever you need to do on the computer for each client. Because even if they're not in a hurry or they are and they have to take a break, they're going to come back and they're going to need those notes. I, I'm going to promise you that one. Um, and their wants and needs. So the other questions are, what do they like about Arizona? So if they're coming here for a job or not, maybe they're retiring or they're looking for an investment property, figure it out what's important to them about Arizona. Um, the next thing is, what does their family like to do? What's important? Because you can't help find a house if you don't know what they're looking for. It, it's not just about bedrooms, guys, and bathrooms. Um, do they like to golf? Do they like to hike? Do they like dog parks? Are schools important? Are restaurants? Is shopping important? Figure out what's important. Price square footage, obviously that's going to come into play, but you need to know their hobbies and what they like. And I'm going to show you why. Um, once I'm done talking with them and figuring out what they like, again, remember I, I said, we want to be a resource. I'm going to send them an email and I'm going to email them links. And I have templates built up. This is like an example of one of my templates. And I have a folder and it says client templates. Um, so anytime that I'm in escrow, a buyer gets all these templates in different stages. But when I get a referral, they get email templates from me. So it'll say after a conversation, I'll send them an email. Thank you for the phone conversation or the Zoom or whatever. I've attached a map. Maybe in our conversation, they don't even know. You guys, you think about it. They're so excited. They've probably read the news or seen the news. Someone's told them they've got to live in Scottsdale. Well, maybe through the conversations, you're like, 
I don't know if Scottsdale's really a fit for you. After we've talked, I think there might be some other areas you also might be interested in. And the price point, let's see, let's see what else you might be interested in. But I can send you some links. Let me tell you, in our conversation, you mentioned you like hiking, you like baseball, we have spring training, we've got NASCAR, we've got all these activities. And so I'll send them links about Easy Central, the things to do. I send them whatever they mention. Some families, their focus is STEM schools. Some families, it's, um, I don't know what people make. The RPR is another one. I don't have this link in here. Um, but depending on like an investor, they will like the RPR reports about the neighborhood and the market because um, it'll give them the age, the voting record, and what people make in the area, how many people have attended college, et cetera. Um, you know, maybe someone's interested in the surf parks, you know. So get familiar with what's going on in the communities and be a resource. And I always attach the buyer advisory, the buyer's guide, and maybe a list of vendors. And then if they're moving in, a relocation guide. And I don't care if, they're, if they live in Arizona, this is something I do with all my buyers because I don't know what bad habits they have. They've never purchased through me. So, um, so we've gone through this part. Um, after this, my conversation may be about the purchase contract and earnest money and the inspection period. Because if they're coming from another state, they may not know the rules of Arizona. So that's why I'm attaching the documents also. Um, I'm just gonna check some chats really quick. Yes, they're new in town. Um, so it's, you always wanna be different and stand out, right? We're professionals. So how can we be different? Just buyer presentations are important. You never want a buyer to say, well, I didn't know that. I didn't know that. And I always follow up in my conversation saying, um, if you have questions, call me, text me, email me. I don't care. If I have to repeat myself over and over, it's okay. And, and no question is a dumb question. And you always want them to feel comfortable about that, no matter the age. Um, and I always bring that up um, so that because depending on their personality, they may not, they may not bring that up. So you need to just do it. Um, educating your clients of the process and our terms, um, the contract, it, it doesn't take that long, guys. So as we're walking through a home, you can do it. As you're on the phone with them, um, in email, there's times that I'm talking to buyers because they're at work. And so the only time they can talk is on text or email. And then we're, I got their prequel and we're going to meet at a house. Um, so it, yeah, it's, we used to do face-to-face -face stuff. So I'm trying to do whatever I can to meet the client. So um, don't assume anything. Don't assume that just because your clients purchased before, um, they've never used you. So um, title reps can give you buyer guides. They can give you a relocation guide. Um, if you don't have access to those at the brokerage, and I'll show you some other links too. Um, they can give you updated ones. They can give you customized ones. If you want to have- Hi, how are you? Oh, Cheryl, can you mute? Um, so in a buyer's packet, um, you can give uh, a graphic page, whatever. Um, what to expect from realtors, a list of reasons why you're the best. It, it goes back to building a buyer presentation similar to a listing presentation. And a lot of agents, I mean, last year we didn't do it, probably this year you should, and next year. Uh, buyers are probably gonna interview, you know, why not? Um, 
So have references in there, have referrals, have, have testimonials. And um, we always have definitions because we tend to use words that they don't understand. Um, information of the pre-approval process. We don't know that. And, and let me tell you, getting a loan right now is a lot different than it was 10 or 15 years ago. So, um, and again, it, going over the, the process. So if you forget to cover it on the phone when you're talking to them and asking things, um, when you email the docs, it's going to have it for them, the process. So when you do meet and go through the houses, you can ask them, hey, did you guys have questions? Can you go through that? Because I always go through it again. You know, earnest money. Some buyers don't think that really has to come out of their checking account. It really does have to come out and it gets held with the title company. So sometimes buyers only have $500. That's your earnest money. We don't have a rule to what that amount is unless it's you know a luxury property, you're not gonna write $500. But you as a buyer agent need to know what that is. Um, and that's why communicating with the team, the lender to find out what kind of an offer you're gonna be writing. You know, do they need closing costs? What, what, how much? Um, is it a percentage or is it a dollar amount? And getting kind of the, the story on the back end without asking the buyer. You don't need to, to embarrass them. You don't need that stuff. Um, you're getting that relationship and the professionalism connection with them. Um, the lender can give you the knit and grit and help you with the offer. Um, buyer mistakes, that's in the buyer presentation in the buyer guide, um, you know, talking to them about the market, you know, if you're telling them and advising them, it may take them losing a house or losing out on the one they want before they'll listen to you, honestly. Um, a map of the area, I usually send that because they come in and they think, oh, I'm gonna live in Phoenix. Okay, do you really? They look it up and it's big. They don't realize that there's a Gilbert or a Chandler or a Tempe or a Glendale or a, you know, they hear one city and then they run with that. So we have to educate them a little bit. Uh, back in the day, relocation, I would put people in my car and I would take them on all the highways. It would take me about four to five hours, but you could do it. And when COVID happened, I was on the speakerphone and my clients were following me in the car behind me. <laughs> so it's doable. You adapt and uh, talk them about the different areas and the different highways and you find out where they're going to work and commuting times and Google Maps, the distance, what's important to them? Are they working from home? And um, again, the real estate terms, it's, it's very different from different states um, and the different paperwork. You know, my clients come in from Wyoming. Those agents don't share anything. Um, my clients didn't even know what a CMA was. So it's just, it's just totally different uh, to Arizona, to some states even use attorneys. And so they don't even know what title and escrow is. So um, really you'll be talking about the market. And I think that makes you look good. If you don't, if you're really nervous and nervous about the market, then get with the coach or get with the leadership at your brokerage. So, because we can help you. Um, be educated on how to write a good offer. Because you don't you don't want to write a bad offer, especially in the first time. But in this kind of market, you should be able to write one offer and get under contract. Um, no matter how much money someone has, you should be able to write a good offer and get them under contract, truly. So, um, and I kind of had jumped ahead, but connect with their lender and find out how to be a good team. Obviously, if that lender does not want to work with you and they're not responding, they're, they don't seem to um, be involved, then you may need to get a different lender involved. And that's okay too. But you talk with the client about that. Um, no one asks, but ask the buyer, how do they want to be communicated with? Is text easier? Is email? On the phone, do they want to have phone conversations? 
I had a client that he had to create an email so that he could sign documents, but he did not have an email and it's, it was his age and he's all by phone. So he didn't have a cell phone. So you, you just need to ask questions because not everybody has technology and they don't know how to use technology. Um, and when there's multiple buyers, you can create the multiple texts, the multiple emails. And rule of thumb, usually the wife is the decision maker, guys, and you wanna win her over. Um, the husband typically will control the money. So he's gonna talk finances, um, understand what's going on. If there's couples, uh, if there's partners, what's going on with the buyers and figure out their wants and needs, figure out what they're looking for and try to, to find a happy medium. Cause you might not be able to get everything that they're both looking for in one property. Um, just side note, like it's usually the women's looking in the master bedroom and the closet and the kitchen. And the man is always like the kitchen or sorry, the, the garage and the living room and you know, not sure why, but that's typically how it how it goes. So not to stereotype that, but um, you know, um, I try to um, make them both seem that they're important and that what they're looking for can be found and, and point out positives about uh, both. And and if you find properties, you can even point out things that might be able to to be changed and. Um, you know, you listen to both of them. Um, you want a happy wife in the house. <laughs> the husband does, believe me, but he's going to want to stick to the budget. So um, don't overthink your buyer presentation. It just, just, it just is. Um, and just be you. Ask questions and be you and talk and open up and let them talk to you and connect to you and um, find common ground that you can share with them because you want them to, to as much as see you as a professional, also see you as a person. And that's why in all my presentations, buyer listing on my website, I do share my family because I'm a person. I mean, as much as I'm, I'm trying to make money to take care of my family, <laughs> like it's the same thing as anybody else. We're all working, uh, but, I want to connect with them. So I share with them why I moved here. I share with them my activities, what I like to do. And they're like, oh my gosh. And then from there, I can share with them things within Arizona and um, schools. Like the, you, I'm sure at some point in any of your clients, you're able to find some sort of common ground. So I'm going to pull these up, but I always have resources available because if you run out of things or something's out of print, I, I don't like waiting on people. Um, people get behind or they're on vacation or whatever. So there's other websites where you can create your own marketing. Um, Breakthrough Brokers got, got a lot of them. Um, so I am just gonna pull these up quick. Make sure you guys can still see my screen. Um, so in the um, Breakthrough Broker, there's a free part and a paid part. I don't pay for, pay for it. So I think that you're up to like 10 downloads a month or something like that. Um, you can create a buyer presentation in here, super easy. Um, and if you upload your profile, your content, your photo, it'll it'll put all your information in there for you. Um, the buyer questionnaire. So I have that in my slides um, too. If you don't like my questions, there's some here. Where do you want to buy? Um, that obviously you, you need to, to find that out, but they may not know until after your first conversation. They may need to think about it. You know, um, usually they've 
sometimes buyers have already done that research. Sometimes they need to have that first conversation with you and you can, you need to explain the market to them. So it really depends on who you're talking to and the information that they're getting. Remember, they might already hear about the news. So you might be counteracting them. And so it just depends on where the conversation's going. So you may need to follow up and go, hey, in our conversation, we didn't even get to cover what you're looking for. But I can create multiple searches on, you know, um, where different areas or pool, no pool, single story, two story, or subdivision or zip code or school. They don't know that. That's why I like showing them the MLS and naming it the searches. And that way they can choose to open those emails if they want. Um, ask questions again of, you know, do they have pets? Do they need a certain size lot? You know, coming from, my clients from Wyoming had massive, they have like 10, 20 acres, you know? So they're shell shocked. They came here and they're like, well, we at least want an acre. And I'm like, okay, for a million dollars. <laughs> and they're like, no, nope. I go, all right. So let's board the horses and let's find something else. So, um, you know, it's not a bad thing. It was just an adjustment. It's just something different, but their quality of life has changed a little. So now they have a pool, their way of life has changed. So they're excited. So change it up. It can be a positive. Um, it's just, just different, you know? Um, so Breakthrough Broker has tons of things in here, guys. Um, they've got a relocation packet, which we're actually creating one for Bliss. I'll show you guys. Um, and they've got uh, customer experience tips or for buyers. Um, they've got the home buyers roadmap. So I downloaded that, um, but it'll come with your photo and I'll show you what it looks like. They've got the buyer presentation template and they even have one, a house hunting checklist. So we used to pass these out to buyers at the very, when I was a baby in 03, um, they could check off, you know, what they were looking for, or, or um, even when they were out looking for feedback on the houses that they were looking at. Um, here's Spanish. Be a badass buyer's agent. <laughs> here's another checklist. There's even in here for teens. So um, this is what it looks like downloaded. So it has your, your logo and then your face, whatever face you put in there, if you want a face. So this is the relocation guide that we're building for the Bliss agents. It's not done yet, it's almost done. So this is something that you would hand to the agent or hand to your client's email. You would typically email it. It's a PDF doc, um, but it talks about, you know, everything to do in Arizona, hiking, different counties, Yes, Tucson is in here too. Um, Got to give love to my Tucson agents. Um, business, school, the fonts are jacked up when I download them. Um, business, um, cost of living, different cities and counties. So this is all being built out right now. Um, But this is a this is a relocation guide, and this is what you would give to people. Um, and it talks about um, schools, private schools. Um, as a relocation agent, these are things that you need to know. So one of my my clients, the ones from Wyoming, they have three teenagers. So 
um, we were dealing with two contingencies, made an offer and they got accepted. The sellers paid for their closing costs, but they're moving from Wyoming to Arizona for their jobs. And the oldest teenager is a senior. So we're dealing with schools. Um, I recommended schooling online. So they all got registered with Primavera um, so that their studies were not interrupted. Um, we found a boarding. I sent them multiple storage facilities for their home, for their all their, they have quads, they have dirt bikes, um, motorcycles, boarding for the horses. My job is not to make decisions for them. My job is to advise to send them different options. The job was to start in September and we didn't close on their house until October. So I asked them, what did they wanna do? Did the husband wanna get out here and live alone and start his job or did the family wanna get out here? Well, the family wanted to get out here. So that means they had to find a place to live. So everything's coming out here. So. That was their decision. So I said, okay, you can look at hotels, you can look at apartments, you can look at Airbnbs, you can look at storage, you can look at places to put everything. Um, so your job as the professional is to send them options and to send them resources so that they can make the decisions for relocation. Some of the jobs will provide relocation services also moving, they'll pay for things. So you can also ask that question too. Um, you can also even be paid by the relocation company and um, get involved in that way so you don't lose the client. Um, so coming in, um, so I don't know if you guys are asking questions or not, but um, It just depends on what they're wanting to do. So if they're wanting to get into an actual school, then it would be locating a school for the house that they were purchasing and under contract. Um, but what's great is both the girls are already, both teenagers have gotten jobs near that house and you know, they're, they're going. Um, so, Sorry, I'm just making sure that my share screens are back up and running. Um, so here's the questionnaires and the roadmaps. Um, that's in the end of my presentation. Do you guys have questions? I felt like I just talk, 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 but. Um, I have a question real quick. Yeah. Well, a comment and then a question. Um, that relocation guide is so cool. Um, <laughs> I love that. That's going to be a huge asset um, because I think our clients are going to love those as well. Yeah. Um, I was like, even as you were scrolling, I was like trying to read and I was like, oh, that's cool. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I've been putting a lot of work into it. Yeah. Um, so super excited for those. Awesome. Um, so my quick question is, um, because we don't have uh, SharePoint anymore, where can we find the Bliss um, logos? Um, like so, if we wanted to put that on our mm -hmm. um, marketing. So it's all in, well, let me get into. It should be under the marketing um, in Suite Assist because everything's in there. I was looking um, at them earlier today um, and I just poking around and I couldn't quite find it, but if it's in there, then I will just mm -hmm. go back and look again. It's under, let's see, Office Docs Marketing Company Logos. Cool, thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. Um, it's under office docs, documents, company logos, or something like that. Yeah. 
So look under the office docs. Okay. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I'm actually going to yeah. run to go get my kids. Yeah. From so you got, you ended on the perfect Good time. job. Thank you, Mara. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Amberlynn. Do you guys have questions? I did have one question. Um, as far as the presentation itself, Mm -hmm. Are you saying that we can go into breakthrough and create? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it yeah. kind, of, kind of guide us on what we need to do or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh. and I'm going to upload my present, the links and everything into Sweet Assist. But yeah, if you go in and create your own account through Breakthrough Broker and do a search, it's all in there. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you're welcome. Breakthrough Broker is a great, it's a great tool. I just... I don't pay for a lot of it. So they, it used to all just be free. And then they, um, they um, changed and they've started, like they actually have marketing. Um, let me pull it back up. They have marketing in here that you can create for the holidays, for social media. Um, and you good, you guys can see, like you can see the Halloween stuff. If you go in and do a snippet, I don't know what your computers all have, but if I do a snippet and um, like save it as a JPEG, I don't even have to download it or, or screenshot, you know what I mean? You can get this as a, a JPEG and now I have marketing. You don't have to pay for it. So there's there's always ways to get, there's always tricks and ways, but trending is, um, there's, there's the marketing. If you guys see up here, there's all kinds of, there's postcards, brochures, flyers, door hangers, social media graphics, listing showcase, um, community reports, social media, planning, so here's real estate business planning. Um, I've never used any of that, but new agent tools, real estate accounting, company analysts, like all this stuff, checklists. So um, working with referrals. So yeah. And then any referrals that I get, I always send a gift card out as a thank you. So it's an incentive, whether it's a $5 gift card, 20, I'll do an Amazon gift card. I'll do a Visa gas card. I'll do something. It's thank you for sending me a referral. I appreciate it. And I can write it off. So it's marketing. That's Any other great. questions? No, yeah. Great. Thank you. Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff. Um, I got all kinds of tips and tricks, but um, yeah, buyer presentations are always though important. Um, you know, you it's your it should be part of your process. You set the precedence. Um, you know, I didn't even um, talk about, but it should be in there of the hours you know that you want to work of contacting. You know talk about with them, you know, how do you want and when do you want them to reach out to you? So that's an important one too. You know, if you take Sunday off or Saturday off or Monday off or, but then you should have an agent in place to cover you. So who is that person? So if you're taking a day off, then let your clients know, Hey, I take this day off, but my partner, so-and-so will assist you. Or if you're out of town, if you're going out of town, I'll just say, hey, I'm going to be out of town next week or such and such. So-and-so's my partner. They're going to be stepping in. Here's their contact information and, you know, they help you work it out. So, yeah. How are you doing, Marie? Blair? Doing good. Um, it's a little over my head, but it's a lot of good info. No, it's never over your head, girl. You can get a <laughs> referral tonight. That's true. <laughs> and a lot of the sync laser starting to talk too. Like 
it's they're, they're just questions like and you start practice on your spouse at home practice on your kids like you'd be surprised you start asking these questions they no one knows they're qualifying questions guys you just ask questions and talk to people and and they're their answers for you so that you know what stage buyers are at. That's all. They help you know where to set up and how to take this buyer. And then you can qualify them in your CRM. You know, is it a, is it a, however you do it, an A lead, a B lead, you know, are they urgent, not urgent? Okay. Set up a reminder to follow up in 30 days or yep, this one I need to work on ASAP. So there's some that are time sucks and there's no need for it. And so it's really important to figure out, you know, with those questions and who those, who those clients are. Lisa, do you have anything? No, I thought that was awesome. <laughs> Pretty much sounded like what I do and then even more. So great job. I was like, oh, I should probably step up my game in some places. <laughs> I mean, it was similar, but I was like, oh, yeah, that actually would be good. I should step yeah. up a little bit in a few places. <laughs> yeah, a lot of we, some agents just keep it really business. But I mean, if you too, if you find out what they like to do, then connect with them and help them out. Or sometimes we can't control where they're buying um because that's sometimes that's dictated by the price um you know truly and the square footage so that sometimes that's out of our hands but you can help by pointing out in the area what's around it that they're looking for like my clients from wyoming their middle child is really into makeup so I pulled up the shopping and Ulta and Sephora. They had no idea what Ulta and Sephora was. Wow. Yeah. So I sent them links and they they had no idea. They loved to ride their quads and motorcycles. They'd never heard what the glamorous sand dudes were. So even if you don't like to do those things or you're not a hiker, it doesn't mean you can't not know where a list of all those things are and to have it ready as a template for the clients that do. So that's, that's all I'm saying. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that you're an all knowing, just have a list of where the malls are or have a list of like, I don't go watch NASCAR. My husband does, but I can for sure as heck send out the link of it to someone that's into NASCAR, you know, I can talk about my husband watching it. <laughs> that's sales and that's connecting with people. So, um, you know, I'll find anything I can to connect with somebody, something, some somewhere. My family's yeah. from somewhere that they're from or, you know, something, like find something. If it's food, sure, I, and, and I love to eat. So get me there. <laughs> Right. Um, so if you find out what they like, you yeah. can tell them like, hey, you know, Arizona is great when you get settled. If you like skiing, you're, you know, an hour and a half away from Flag or three hours from mm -hmm. Pine Top. And then if they're foodies, you're like, if you go up there, you got to check out these restaurants or yep. like the beach, you're three and a half hours to Rocky Point. There's some great resorts or, you yep. know, and sometimes they don't realize how close we are to so many different areas that are completely different, even though True. we're in the desert, how easy it is to see a lot more things without driving all that far yep. and get to other activities. Oh yeah. It's big. And they always appreciate that when you're mm -hmm. like telling them, like you said, if they're foodies, tell them the restaurants, they should mm -hmm. check out why they're there doing whatever activities mm -hmm. they love. It's it. I mean, honestly, Arizona is great. We've got the ballet, we've got music, we've got art, we've got the big city. And yet we also have country. We've got all kinds of outdoor living and festivals. And there's so many different, different um, activities. And even in the 55, um, clubs the the neighborhoods there's 
events that are constantly planned. Um, so just the thing is, is the resource, even sending them a vendor list, because then you're coming off that you know people in the area because you want them to reach out to you. Like my clients are always ask, are already asking about hair, um, makeup, where to go for shopping, where to go for mechanics. They're already asking, you want people to come back. You want people to remember you, not just for real estate, for resource. Because remember, people only buy or sell within two to four years. So if they think, oh, well, Mara knows this, Mara knows that, Mara knows this person, let's ask Mara, let's ask Mara, let's ask Mara. That, that should be it. You don't always want to just be known as real estate. So even the marketing that you're putting out or the content, talk about things, talk, talk about things that you're passionate about and what you love and be a resource. So, yeah. Cool. All right. That's perfect. Thank you so much, Mara. Yeah. Thank you, Lisa. Thanks, guys. Yeah. You guys have Thank to, you. to reach out to me, okay? Okay, will do. That was great information. Thank you so much. Okay, have a great day. You too. Bye-bye.